For the last decade and a half, the Transformers film franchise, based on the Hasbro toy brand, has been overall one of the biggest and most reliable in Paramount's stable. Granted, quality was slipping under Michael Bay, something the Travis Knight-directed Bumblebee unfairly took a box office hit for. But the struggling Paramount is determined to bring the franchise back to previous box office glory. Persistent rumors would have it that in order to do so, they are bringing out the big guns by bringing in both the real American hero, G.I. Joe, and the Mobile Armored Strike Command, also known as Mask, and that the seeds for a Hasbro Cinematic Universe may be planted already in the upcoming G.I. Joe reboot, Snake Eyes. In this video, we will begin by briefly going through the rise and fall of the Transformers franchise, and the rumors that more parties may be about to enter the fray. Then we'll explore the brief histories of G.I. Joe and Mask respectively, and who else might join the expanded Hasbro Cinematic Universe going forward. Despite longtime fans being less than pleased with the overdesigned deviations from the G1 templates, the first live-action Transformers was a crowd-pleasing smash hit upon release. The movie was produced by Lorenzo Di Bonaventura and directed by Michael Bay, both of whom would stick with the franchise in the longer term. The movie propelled Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox into stardom, but both of their involvement with the franchise would be limited. Not as limited, though, as Travis Van Winkle's character, Trent DeMarco. He played the ex-boyfriend of Megan Fox's character, but he got over her very quickly. Between the events of the first two Transformers movies, he took his new romantic interest and his friends to show off his family's expensive lakeside retreat. This retreat just so happened to be situated by Camp Crystal Lake, and there they encountered one Jason Voorhees as seen in the Michael Bay produced 2009 remake of Friday the 13th. The implication of this would be that Jason Voorhees exists within the Transformers universe, but we'll get back to crossovers in due course. Megan Fox would return in the sequel, but after that she started publicly criticizing Michael Bay for sexualizing her on screen ever since her first appearance in Bad Boys 2. Since Me Too hadn't been invented yet, this resulted in her being replaced for the third movie by Rosie Huntington Whitley. From the fourth movie, Mark Wahlberg replaced Shia LaBeouf as the series' lead. The big problem, however, was always the writing. Despite Transformers sequels frequently crossing the $1 billion threshold at the box office due to the goodwill from the first movie, none of the sequels were able to recatch that lightning in a bottle. On the contrary, many found each new movie to be worse than the previous one, and the pandering to China was palpable. By the time of the fifth movie, The Last Night, the bad word of mouth caught up with the box office. The movie that took the full brunt of it, however, was the prequel Bumblebee. Directed by Travis Knight instead of Michael Bay, many considered this movie to be as good or even better than the first. However, by this point, the audience was fatigued, and so many who had been there for the earlier sequels never showed up to give the arguably superior Bumblebee a chance. Due to its underperformance, a rethink was in order. However, by this time, the rumors of an MCU-inspired Hasbro Cinematic Universe also featuring G.I. Joe and Mask were already swirling. The rumors of a G.I. Joe and Mask crossover with the Transformers have never been debunked and they resurfaced on September 5th. That's when Mikey Sutton of Gigosity Magazine published a scoop claiming that if the upcoming G.I. Joe reboot, Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins feature film as a hit, then a Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover movie could be next. In a follow-up scoop from September 19th, it was claimed that this crossover movie could also feature the on-screen debut of Mask. To those who only know one or the other, or worse yet, only know of G.I. Joe from the earlier feature films, let us provide an introduction to the two properties. While most entertainment brands based on toy lines can trace their lineage back to the 80s, few have as rich a history as G.I. Joe. The story of G.I. Joe in and of itself is fascinating, one which we will cover in more depth at a later date. However, for the time being, let's focus on the iteration of G.I. Joe most people know, love, and associate with the term, the 80s version. In making this, toy manufacturer Hasbro teamed up with Marvel Comics writer Larry Hama to create backstories and codenames for the highly trained counter-terrorist team, which at the time consisted of 13 soldiers, each specializing in their own unique combat weapon. Their stories were further fleshed out in the monthly licensed Marvel comic, also written by Larry Hama. The Joes, as they were called, were also given a clearly defined enemy to fight, a fictional terrorist army without a nation named Cobra, led by their faceless leader known only as the Cobra Commander. With the election of Ronald Reagan as 40th President of the United States came the appointment of Mark S. Fowler as FCC Commissioner. 
Fowler would proceed to deregulate children's television and strip away the restrictions regarding advertising and children's programming. This would open the floodgate for a plethora of programming that would essentially serve as feature-length commercials for a variety of toy lines and products. On September 12, 1983, G.I. Joe A Real American Hero premiered in syndication on 122 television stations across America. The combination of the cartoon, the toy line, and the comics by Marvel hammered this iteration of G.I. Joe and its characters into the mainstream and popular culture. G.I. Joe A Real American Hero served as the basis for the 2009 feature film G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra and its 2013 sequel G.I. Joe Retaliation, neither of which were smash hits. Despite up until this point being billed as a prequel to the 2009 movie, the franchise will functionally be rebooted in 2021 with the G.I. Joe Origins movie Snake Eyes. MASK, an acronym for Mobile Armored Strike Command, was another joint toy line and animated series to come out of the Reagan era of FCC deregulation. 75 syndicated episodes were released between September of 1985 and November of 1986, all in support of the corresponding toy line by Kenner Products, which was later acquired by Hasbro. Mask was in many ways an amalgamation of G.I. Joe and Transformers. Like G.I. Joe, Mask were an elite team that fought their own terrorist organization in Venom, an acronym for Vicious Evil Network of Mayhem. <laughs> you serious? Like Transformers, the vehicles had alt modes. Mask has already crossed over with both G.I. Joe and Transformers in the pages of IDW Comics. And depending on the reception of Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins, they could also appear on the big screen in a possible future Hasbro Cinematic Universe. G.I. Joe and Transformers have not only crossed over in the pages of comics, an aging Cobra Commander even made a cameo in a Season 3 episode of the original G1 Transformers animated series. So a crossing over of the two has been a possibility for a very, very long time. The idea of doing so on film gained serious traction in the aftermath of the success of the MCU. And already five years ago, The Hollywood Reporter broke down Paramount's plans of building a cinematic universe around not just the Transformers and G.I. Joe, although those were the heavy hitters, but also Mask, Rom the Space Knight, Micronauts, and Visionaries. Of course, that was five years ago. Since then, those plans would appear to have been stalled by two underperforming Transformers movies, as well as Paramount's general financial difficulties and more recently, Hollywood for all intents and purposes shutting down. But that news of a Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover movie has reached Mikey Sutton in the aftermath of Emma Watts being installed as production head honcho just a few months ago would appear to suggest that crossing over the Transformers with G.I. Joe and Mask appears to be back in the cards. The scoop doesn't say anything about Rom, the Micronauts, or the Visionaries. So it could be that Paramount will be biding their time with those yet. But it would appear to be forward motions. So if the upcoming Snake Eyes proves to be a hit, who knows what may be next. Let us know how excited you are for Snake Eyes and what kind of Transformers crossovers you would like to see in the comments.